Hi everyone, I'm Songyu Park from Institute for Basic Science. Today, I'd like to talk about our research on experimental study to understand user experience and perception bias occurred by fact checking messages. We conducted a large online experiment to study several unintended consequences that result from the perception bias in fact checking. Fact checking has become the most practical solution for fighting misinformation online. Fact checking can be seen in various platforms, including Google search, Facebook news posts, and others. Services like Snoop.com, PolitiFact, and IFCN are dedicated to verifying online information. And many studies have examined their critical roles in today's information propagation. What we study in this paper is related to how fact-checking sites reveal their labels to users. Many sites have a wide range of fact-checking labels, not just black and white, fact or false. For instance, Snoop's alpha labels like mixture, outdated, unproven, and scam. As the rate of misinformation is increasing rapidly, rapidly online, and the time needed to check them is significant, we will likely see a large number of messages to be labeled as borderline labels, like unproven as of now, or mixture. How will these labels be perceived by people? That is the question we ask in this paper. So more specifically, we ask these three questions. First, what about borderline messages like divided evidence? Second, to what extent borderline messages affect on the willingness to share? And third, how effective is fact-checking when an opposite tag is shown. We conducted a large experiment involving 11,000 young adults from Amazon Mechanical Turk. We exposed online participants to a randomly chosen rumor that is neither true nor false. These rumors were chosen from the unproven category at Snoops and included claims like Marlene Monroe's IQ was measured at 168. Once a user saw the claim, we asked their immediate view on how, how true or false the claim seems, which we call pre-stance. Then we showed a random hypothetical fact-checking message and asked again people's view on the claim, which we call post-stance. We also ask if respondents are willing to share the claims online. By comparing the pre stance and the post stance, we may measure the effect of the fact checking condition. And so we had five conditions. First, mostly true. Second, mostly false. Third, mixed evidence. Fourth, divided evidence and fifth, lack of evidence. And among them, divided evidence is supposed to incline the risk aversion bias of users, while lack of evidence is supposed to incline the uncertainty aversion bias of users. And the resulting responses of users reveal one important pattern. Regardless of the fact-checking type, people become more critical about believing an online rumor when shown any message at all. So this means fact-checking is effective. And of course, we also ob observe that uh, people are attentive to fact-checking and their views follow the messages leading. For example, if we show a claim is mostly true, then 
that a people's view become more positive toward the claim. Whereas if we show the mostly false fact-checking message, people's view becomes more negative. Here, we find another prominent trend. While our borderline messages were intended to be perceived similarly, one of them, lack of evidence, which triggers the uncertainty bias, was perceived negatively. Willingness to share a message led to a similar trend. Among the borderline fact-checking messages, people were less likely to share claims when they are tagged as lack of evidence. And as one might expect, mostly true claims were far more likely to be shared than mostly false claims. Although the fact-checking messages had been randomly assigned by us, and all claims are unproven as of now. Also, their tendency became stronger on social media than one-on-one -on -one channels like instant messenger or email. We also tested what happens when the fact-checking message is opposite to people's initial view on the claim. We can think of two scenarios. First, when people initially think the claim is likely true or, or true, but the fact-checking message said it's likely false. In this case, people's stance will shift to the opposite direction and become more negative toward the claim. Second, um, when pre-stance is now likely false or false, but assume um, the fact-checking message said uh, it's actually likely true. In this case, people's stance will also shift to the opposite direction. However, um, this change is more subtle than otherwise. And it means that people are less likely to change their views if their initial view was negative. And we call this phenomenon disapproval bias. And to double check the analysis, we also tried Bayesian inference, computing the odds ratio to, to infer either mostly true or mostly false message is shown when the opposite pristine information, which is either positive or negative, is given. The result also indicates that the odds ratio of inferring mostly false message is higher, which align, aligns with the presence of disapproval bias. We also try to check the validity of the experiment. So um, subjects with a positive pre-stance may be more willing to change to the opposite position than those with a negative one, knowing that others tend to believe the opposite. If this were the case, claims with stronger negative pre-stance would show stronger dis disapproval bias. But um, as you can see, figure C does not support this hypothetical case. It does not show a clear relationship between the proportion of negative pre-stance and the degree of disapproval bias across the claims or a mild negative association. And it suggests a weaker disapproval bias for a claim with stronger negative pre-stance. And this association suggests that if we, if we re replicate the current experiment with unproven claims of a more balanced pre-stance between true and false, we are likely to ob uh, observe a more substantial disapproval bias rather than a weaker one. To conclude, we, we assess this with caution that the disapproval bias observed in this current study is not um, likely to be a byproduct of predominant negative pre-stance. Besides the control experiment, 
we also conducted qualitative user studies. To the question, did the fact-checking condition affect your stance on the, pre uh, on the presented rumor? Eight out of 10 people said they were influenced by the fact-checking message, regardless of the condition provided. One, especially one respondent commented about the borderline fact-checking message and said, although the borderlines provide any clear decisions, they make him rethink about the given claims. Finally, um, to the question, would you have shared the claims with the borderline fact-checking message? And if so, why? And four out of 10 people said, they might share claims with divided evidence as they may spark good discussion in their network. And especially when participants said, fun is a, a critical criterion for sharing something online for me. So I would share information or misinformation only if it is fun and not hostile to people to be sent. While fun was not an expected role of the divided evidence message, it was quite intriguing or interesting to observe how people perceive fact-checking labels in the wild. So here are some takeaways. First, we found a strong proof of uncertainty aversion, yet no grounds for risk aversion behavior for fact-checking messages. Second, we found a tendency of disapproval bias, which represents that people active a stronger form of disconfirmation bias when, when starting with a disbelief than a belief. And this disapproval bias might help explain why people are prone or vulnerable to conspiracy theory. And third, some borderline fact-checking messages unintendedly increase willingness to share of unproven claims or rumors. And we, will, we believe these, our research outcomes can suggest various, various implications or news outlets um, in practice. So we, uh, our findings shed light on understanding the unintended and diminish, diminished effect of fact-checking due to cogn cognitive biases. We are excited to think about a number of future directions. First, um, we can consider participants' backgrounds, such as ethnic information, and second, we can also consider a uh, dynamics between claim lean and participant lean, especially with the political perspective, such as liberal, liberal favored claims to conservative favored claims and liberal users to conservative users. Third, um, we can also explore interactions between uncertainty aversion bias and this opera bias that um, have been found or explored in the current study. And finally, um, we can examine more effective represent, representations on text or and graphics uh, for uh, re uh, regarding um, the fact-checking messages, various fact-checking messages. Okay. Thank you so much for your interest in our work and I love to get questions during the uh, live session. And also, should you have any questions, additional questions or comments, or even concerns, um, please feel free to uh, reach out to me with this given email address. Again, thank you for listening.